So why should you build your own PC? Building your own PC isn't just about stretching your dollar as far as you can take it. It's also about customization, performance, upgradability, and also creativity. Today we're going to be showing you step by step on how to build not just a dream PC, but also discussing why PC building is more than just about the hardware. This video is in collaboration with ASUS, highlighting PC DIY, which is a great resource for all things PC building. The hardware we're utilizing in today's video is ASUS's ProArt line of hardware, which is dedicated for creatives and professionals who prioritize workflow while maintaining a clean aesthetic. Let's break down the components that we will be using in today's video. ASUS ProArt GeForce RTX 4070 Ti Super. ASUS ProArt Z890 Creator Wi-Fi. Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. Team Group T-Create DDR5 32GB, 6000MHz. Patriot Viper VP4300 Lite. ASUS ProArt LC360 AIO. ASUS Prime 750W Gold. ASUS ProArt PA602. Before we do anything, we want to make sure that our environment is clean and static free, and we have the right tools to get the job done as smoothly as possible. We'll be using our iFixit kit to build this PC, as this kit includes everything that you would need. Now let's start with the motherboard, as we'll be installing the CPU first. We'll gently place the CPU onto the socket itself, making sure that the notches on both the motherboard and the CPU line up before we latch it in. As we apply the latch, the socket cover will pop off, simply remove before final installation. Next, we'll install the RAM by seating each DIMM into the primary slots and making sure the latches are locked in fully before proceeding. Moving on, let's install the M.2 NVMe by removing the existing heat sink from the motherboard and slotting in the NVMe. Since this NVMe is only a single-sided model, we only need to remove the thermal pad tape from the main heatsink itself. Lastly, let's install the socket attachment for the AIO to the back side of the motherboard. This will allow easy AIO installation later. Simply align the AIO backplate with the mounting holes on the motherboard and install the AIO standoffs onto the backplate itself. Now that everything is installed onto the motherboard, we can mount the motherboard into the case. This is done safest by laying the case down flat onto the table. The board will seat directly onto the pre-installed standoffs, and then we will use the provided hardware to secure it into the case. With the motherboard installed fully, it's time to install the AIO. However, most times the AIO placement slightly inhibits the 8-pin EPS cables from being plugged in. So to counter that issue, we will be pre-installing the EPS cables ahead of time. Now let's install the AIO. With the design of this case, the PA602 allows for easy installation by removing the mount bracket entirely so that we can install the fully assembled AIO outside of the case first. This really helps expedite the AIO installation process entirely. With the AIO radiator mounted, now it's time to mount the AIO head to the CPU. This will require thermal paste. However, we will be utilizing the pre-applied thermal paste instead of using our own. Next, we line up the AIO head to the backplate standoffs and apply even pressure to the CPU so that contact remains fully intact while mounting the AIO head to the CPU fully. There is one more big component that we need to add to the motherboard, and that is the graphics card, and what a perfect match this card is with the rest of the ProArt line. 
Last but not least, it's time to install the PSU and included cables. This is also when cable management comes into play. Luckily, this case allows for easy management and making the job quick. The PC is built and it's time for the moment of truth. Will it boot? Let's double check the connections, hit the switch on the power supply, and let's find out. Now that the PC is up and running, we'll be updating the BIOS to the latest version. Afterwards, we'll install the OS and required drivers for normal operation. Now, one of the biggest reasons why we continue to build PCs to this day is the customization side of things. Depending on your wants, needs, and style, the customization side is completely up to you. If you want to water cool your system or theme your PC after your favorite video game or just have a basic color scheme, there are basically no limits to this hobby and that's why we love PC building so much. PC building is an incredibly useful skill to have and it's a great creative outlet as well. So whether you're a gamer or a video editor, or you really just like to build and tinker, there's really nothing like powering on a machine that you built with your own hands for the first time. Thank you so much to ASUS for sponsoring this video and allowing us the privilege to discuss PC DIY. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.